a second peak of my streams. <laughs> oh my god, I live in a timeline where I can finally date Colonel Sanders. God bless America. <laughs> oh my god this is gonna be a great time i'm gonna try my best to do voices but uh i tend to get loud when doing voices so this might be an issue but first of all holy shit that intro was loud well secondly it was beautiful this is 10 times more important than clan admob. <laughs> Alright. Now, I have the stream classic name, but I'm not... I'm not too sure. Uh, your voice is pretty quiet. Uh, the game was just loud by contrast. Uh, I didn't change the microphone settings, but I will talk more directly into the microphone, I guess. Because, yeah, no, I'd really... Eh, I guess I could afford to turn it up a bit. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, you know what? Just a bit. And yes, Gilg, this is the return of VN streams. This is the peak of my content. Alright, I have to go with the stream classic. Wait, hold... What the fuck? There we go. <laughs> what a beautiful world we live in. Oh, God bless. <laughs> okay, what's this? Alright. Oh, fuck me. This might get really close to an ASMR stream, but, uh, oops. You sleep softly as the morning sun casts a warm glow through the window of your modest student apartment. The world is peaceful and serene. You could stay in the moment forever. Or you could wake up now, now, now. Your first day of culinary school is no time to sleep in. Smack that clock or throw... <laughs> I'm going for the hidden ending, stay in bed forever. You slept through the school year and gave up on the once in a lifetime. <laughs> this is the quality content I wanted. <laughs> I give up. Is this really just the end of the game? <laughs> Alright guys, I got the hidden ending. I can't fucking believe it. Okay, shit. This is a skippable intro, but I kind of want to watch it again. At the same time, no I don't. Thank you. <laughs> Excellent. Alright, that's my first playthrough of, um... I was like, um, 45 seconds? I think that's a speedrunning new, new record. Oh my god, I need to turn it down. <laughs> I really need to turn it down. Like, I, I'm actually getting, like, really loud. Oh, fuck me. You sleep softly as the morning sun blah 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 blah. Okay, smack that clock up and at him. Lying in bed, you stare at the ceiling, thinking about everything that awaits you at the prestigious University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning. Your mind begins to wander. Who will be there? What will you cook? What should you wear? Time begins to fly by, and you find your imagination getting away from you. Uh... Take this seriously or think about the future. Daydream. I'm a believer. It's here, finally. Your first day of culinary school. So many dishes to prepare. So many students to meet. Your mind is swimming with possibilities when you realize you're running late. 
You grab a biscuit and burst out the door in a hurry. Mmm, delicious. Just what you needed to wake up those taste buds. <laughs> Yikes. You're in such a hurry, in fact, that you forgot to put on any deodorant before running out the door. You're sweating buckets as you rush to arrive on time. Uh-oh. Standing in the quad, you gaze upon the magnificent University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning. Here comes your lifelong best friend forever, Miriam. She's the most adorably awkward person you've ever met, and you absolutely love her for it. Why are the names in all caps? <laughs> I fucking hate this. <laughs> oh my god. The only thing you prepare at culinary school is fucking fried chicken. Alright, I need to do voices again, but I need to do voices but shushed. Are you ready for my, cringing vo my cringy voice acting 2.0? Because I'm not. <clears throat> this might be Fire Emblem, I can't tell. It is a dating simulator, so it's pretty damn close. Wait a minute, Miriam, you're right, this is Rabby Ribby. I can't believe it. <laughs> Fucking Christ. <sighs> I'm not ready to do voices, son of a bitch. Good morning, my dude. Are you excited for the first day of the rest of our lives? Actually, I'm... Because I sure am... <laughs> These poses. Excited, a little nervous. Okay, okay, a lot nervous. What's the... Uh... It's just that this morning I made breakfast for myself, but... Well, when I ate it, I couldn't taste any love in the food. What if I'm no good? What if I fail? Classic Miriam. Raised by MasterChef parents, she's always held herself to a very high standard. Ever since we were little babies playing together and you rescued me from that quicksand box, <laughs> it's been clear to me that you're the most loving, caring person I know. You're going to do great. <laughs> But with University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning's famous three-day only semesters, I'm afraid of being left behind and never catching up. Never mind, the voices are going out the window, I can't do this shit. <laughs> is this a, a dating sim where the only romance option is Col 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 Colonel Sanders? I don't know, and that's why I'm here to find out. A sweet girl, Miriam has always had a flair for the dramatic. This summer, she got so nervous about her first kiss that she chipped a tooth practicing on a mannequin. What? Should you pep talk her or change the subject to give her some relief? Relief? Oh my god, I really can't speak English. Um, pep talk or school gossip? Sure, pep talk. Remember last month when we saw that fortune teller and had our tarot cards read? The lady with the mask who gave me nightmares? I've been trying to forget. I know she looked spooky, but she was so sweet. And she told you that you were destined for great things. Remember that card with the fancy looking tower? And the other card featuring the handsome fellow in the red suit? I've been waiting for so long to meet a handsome fellow I could call my own. And I'm sure you will soon. In no time we'll be graduating and you'll be delighting the world with your heartfelt cooking in no time at all. As you talk Miriam up, you can feel her er I can't speak. Her nerves begin to ease. I bet I could beat up Miriam. Are you like this? You know what? Maybe everything will be okay after all. And if not, at least I have these killer bangs. Can you believe I cut them myself? You can definitely believe it. I, uh... I cannot believe it. Before you can get another word out, you're rudely interrupted when someone smacks your books and custom-engraved measuring spoons out of your hands and onto the ground. Hey! It's Ashley. That is the most roundabout way to say Ash Ashley. Ash is it Ashley or Ashley? I actually wouldn't even know. Speaking of chipping teeth in PE today, a kid's a kid named Miles was running and fucking ate a metal handrail, and he had three teeth chip. What the hell? How the how do you just run into a metal rail? Okay, wait. Is this is this Ashley, 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 or Ashley? <laughs> I actually don't know. Uh. 
All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna like be fancy about it. It's Ashley. It's Ashley, your arch rival. She's totally evil, but you can't help but be filled with jealousy. She can get anything she wants, and she knows it. Heart cut out to show the cleavage. Very nice. KFC knows how to appeal to an audience. Hello, Ashley. Oh my god, I don't even know how to fucking. Damn, she's thick though. Holy shit. <laughs> oh, I didn't see you there, chicken shins. You leave my dude's shins alone. They are perfectly normal shins. Ugh, you can't stand Ashley. Even her name is annoying. You know for a fact that it's actually Ashley, but she has to- Okay, it's Ashley. There you go. But she had to add extra letters to make herself feel better than everyone. If anyone here knows what perfect shins look like, it's us. We're not going to let you or your really weird insults get to us. Across the quad, you see Ashley's best friend, Van Van the Man Man, has stopped to look at his own reflection in the mirror. His pants are so tight you can see him casually working out his glutes while he styles his hair. No lie, they're rockin' glutes. I actually can't fucking... <laughs> Alright. Ahem. <clears throat> Van Van? You rang right. Oh my god. <laughs> you rang rang? You've never been sure what their arrangement is, but as long as you've known them, Ashley and Van Van have been just as close as you and Miriam, but substantially more devious. I can't believe that University of Cooking School Academy for Learning would ever allow people like you to attend as students. I know, right? You think they just hand us our diplomas now? Or maybe hire us on as professors. You amateurs could learn a lot from us. With the first day of school about to start, there's just not time to properly tell these two off, so you resist the urge. Let's go, Miriam. <laughs> See you later, losers! Oh no, what the hell? <laughs> As you approach the door, you see a goofy looking- Okay, that's a loud sound effect. You see a goofy looking kid pushing hard against a window directly next to it. <laughs> what? Is that a fart? That's a fart. No, I think- What the fuck is this supposed to be? I think it's broken. You reach forward and easily pull the door open. Um, that should do the trick. I love you. I think you mean thank you? My name is Pop. I was named after my Pop Pop. He's old. Could someone like this also be a student at the school? He must be one heck of a chef. Also, his name tag clearly says Bob, but I guess he's reading it upside down. Hi, Pop. I'm my dude. <laughs> so, are you going to make me hold this door all day? Nope. And with that, the young man walks into the building ahead of you. Aww. Is it just me, or is he kinda cute? It's just you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you both shrug your shoulders before following him into the building. You stand at the edge of the room, unsure where to sit. Other students wander in and keep themselves busy chit-chatting. A scruffy-looking pooch takes his place at a podium at the front of class. Adorable! Now, now, quiet everyone. Who is this unreasonably cute pup, and why is he in our culinary class? You must be Sprinkles, head instructor and CEO of UCSLA. LA, shit, AL. <laughs> Please, call me Professor Dog. I may be cute and little and fluffy, but I still demand respect. Wolf. <laughs> what? A cute dog is our professor? This is the best school ever. I guess only a dog's nose is capable of picking up all the nuances of fine dining. <laughs> like KFC. Out of nowhere, wind begins to rush around you as a swirl of cherry blossom petals <laughs> fill the air inside the classroom. Dude, they're just trying to fit as many fucking anime stereotypes as they can. Oh my god, this is amazing. I'm chilly. Someone closed a window. And then... He walks in. You're immediately swept up in the aura of this new student and his remarkable goatee. <laughs> Who knew anyone could be so handsome? Time stands still. It's him. It's... If it isn't my favorite student, 
Harland, Colonel Sanders interrupts Sprinkles. Sorry, Professor Dog, before he can finish his sentence. Please, call me Col Colonel. I see Colonel, and I am like Colonel, but it's Colonel. That English makes no sense, dude. End me. <laughs> Fucking Christ. Please, call me Colonel. Colonel Sanders. A hushed murmur rolls through the classroom as Col Col Dude, every time I see every time I see that word, I'm going to say colonel because it just doesn't make any fucking sense that this is pronounced colonel. Oh my god. As Colonel Sanders walks down the aisle of desks, suddenly the room is sweltering. Sweat begins to beat across your bro. You feel like everyone is looking at you, and you're not entirely wrong. Also, I don't know if that's pronounced brow. That's pronounced brow. And this over here must be sweaty sweats a lot. <laughs> Maybe we should open that window back up before faucet pits melts into a puddle and evaporates entirely. Okay, real talk. I'm not gonna lie. That's that's actually it's actually not too bad. Well, you got him with the faucet pits. <laughs> Hold on a second. Nobody talks to my friend like that. You two both know my name. We are in the same kindergarten class. And what is with your really weird insults? Besides, when my- oh shit. Besides, when my dude sweats a lot, it's not gross, it's beautiful. Look at that shimmer. <laughs> you turn to find Colonel- <laughs> You don't have a choice. Colonel Sanders picked you. Colonel Sanders, beautiful angel that he is, stands before you, smiling gently, his hand outstretched. Boy, howdy. This classroom gets hotter than a Kentucky fryer. <laughs> Am I supposed to give him the southern accent? <laughs> I think I am. <laughs> this is so cursed. <laughs> Please, use my handkerchief. You freeze up. Colonel Sanders is talking to you. <laughs> Wait, Colonel Sanders is talking to you? About how sweaty you look? You're completely mortified. This can't be your first interaction. What if he never forgets this moment? How will you respond? <laughs> what is this fucking... <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you stretch out your hand, and Colonel Sanders places a fine silk handkerchief in it. It's so beautiful, you hesitate to press it to your face, but when you do, the feeling is transcendent. It has its natural scent on it. It smells of the most delicious chicken you've ever smelled. <laughs> Professor Dog steps in to settle the class down and set some ground rules. <clears throat> Welcome to University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning, the greatest culinary academy in the world. The birthplace of culinary legends, past, present, and future. Many challenges await you. There will be tears. There will be blood. There might even be really adorable tiny food. And when all is said and done, there will be a battle. You will lift your sports and compete in the broom cooking arena. Just then, another student enters the classroom and interrupts the professor's rousing speech. Hi guys, sorry I'm late. I hope everyone had a good summer. I really miss- Quiet! Late to class is bad enough, but interrupting my monologue? You're on the fast track out if you're a young man. Are you sure you're even in the right place? Don't you recognize me? This is my third year in this school with you as my teacher. This guy is so sad. Is this a college or a high school? They gotta make up their minds. That's the glory. Everyone stares at him blankly. Does no one remember me? I'm... You're expelled if you utter one more word before I finish. Let that be a lesson to you students that tardiness is unacceptable. Even Clank made it here on time, rolling halfway across town on his tiny wheels. You turn to see the student Sprinkles is referencing, who appears to be some sort of industrial kitchen appliance. What the actual fuck? This just gets dumber and dumber the longer I play it. I'm not sure if I could power through this. The class bursts into laughter. Oh, Clank, you rascal. Sprinkles walks in the room. As everyone stands in silent obedience, wait, walks in the classroom, 
as everyone stands in silent obedience. When he gets to you, he lifts his nose into the air and takes a deep sniff. Hmm, your diet is lacking. Based on what I'm picking up here, you definitely need a multivitamin. You should be taking better care of yourself. You've never had a talking dog as a teacher before, but Sprinkle's reputation for being smart but tough is well known. You decide to try and butter him up by giving him a treat from your pocket, but what kind? Beef treat, rubber ball, chicken snack. <laughs> I, I feel like they're really trying to pander toward uh, a certain product here. You reach beneath your apron and return with a chicken snack in your hand. Sprinkle's eyes go wide as he locks onto it. His favorite. <laughs> well, well, well. I think there might be some competition for new star student. You literally just bribe your teacher on the first day. What the actual hell? <laughs> the furry professor immediately devours the snack, leaving your hand slick with a coating of warm doggy drool. You see the other students eyeing you jealously, but pay no mind to them. If they wanted to succeed in life, they should have learned the importance of carrying a range of dog treat flavors on them at all times. Settle down, young chefs. Take your seats and prepare to have your minds open to the amazing possibility of culinary creation. As everyone rushes to claim their favorite seats, you're left standing at the front of the room. Only two options remain. Hey, my dude, there's still a seat here. It seems. Oh shit. I. God, it's like, do I give him the southern accent or not? Like, I don't even know how to do a southern accent. If I do a southern accent, it'll just sound lazy. I'm just gonna lazily say the lines. You don't give your teacher a blowjob for good grades, you give him KFC. Alright, now wait one moment there, Bob. Uh. God. You know what? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna try to give him the, the, the fucking husbando, white, husbando voice, and whenever he says some southern shit, I'm just gonna say it as straight as possible, no accent, and it's going to be so cursed. It seems that no one has claimed this seat next to me. If you're interested, two good options, but which will you choose? Sit by Colonel Sanders or your best friend? <laughs> Am I a whore? Am I a fucking slut who will go for Colonel Sanders instead of my lifelong best friend? I thought the southern accent came with being Texan. You'd really think so. You really think so. I'm a whore, Colonel Sanders. You move to take your seat by Colonel Sanders. It appears he brought no books, pens, or pencils. However, his perfect upright posture shows off a seriousness that makes you confident in his desire to learn. He has like one pen on his sleeve right now though, what the hell? What a lie. Thanks for offering me this seat. I've only had two rules. Do all you can and do it the best you can. It's the only way you'll, you ever get that feeling of accomplishing something. That's so inspiring. A little off topic if you ask me, but okay. As soon as you settled in your seat, the professor makes an announcement. <clears throat> Think fast, it's time for a pop quiz. Yay, a, pop, a quiz about me! Why is this character in the fucking game? This incredibly important and surprisingly short quiz will tell me if you're ready for life at culinary school. Keep your knives sharp and your focus sharper. Here comes question one. If train A is traveling to point B, and train B is traveling to point A, how important is it to wash your hands before cooking? <laughs> Extremely, looking at you, Pop. <laughs> sure, that's right. Forest is to tree as chicken is to... <laughs> I guess feather? Yeah, no, it has to be feather, but what the, what the fuck is this? Wowza. What is the most efficient eating utensil ever created? A spork? <laughs> the fucking KFC display of sporks. What kind of fucking corporate propaganda am I playing right now?
Why don't we just sell metal sporks? Why do we still have forks and spoon silverware, but we don't have spork silverware? Life is a scam. <laughs> Fucking spork. What food is best for a broken heart? I swear to god, if it says- oh, okay. Anything, as long as it's prepared with love and not too much salt. A pancake that looks like a silly face and camel meat. Prepared with love. Wowza. Is Sprinkles a good boy? <laughs> this game is so cursed. He's the best boy. Wowza. Wow, be honest. Did you cheat? You look up to see Colonel Sanders has been watching you tally your score. He's impressed. I know we just met, but I have to confess. I think you have a beautiful brain. Hot diggity, my dude. You just scored some major Colonel Sanders points with that performance. <laughs> May I have your attention, students? I have an important announcement to make. Time for lunch. This is... I don't, I don't know how much I could put up with this game, I'm not gonna lie, this is already fucking pushing it. Wow. The cafeteria is as nice as any restaurant you've ever eaten at. It makes sense that a school dedicated to cooking would also be serious about eating. A delicious fragrance wafts through the room and tickles the end of your nose. Your mouth wa- Colonel Sanders is gonna walk into the fucking cafeteria with a bucket of chicken, isn't he? He's gonna have like a full size bucket of fried chicken and everyone's gonna like stare in awe. It's like, wow, Colonel Sanders, what's that? It's like, this, my children, is my gift to the world. And then he like hands you a chicken leg and you take a bite and your mind fucking explodes. Like, wow, 13 natural herbs and spices blowing through my taste buds. <laughs> this is gonna be stupid. Do you smell that? That must be our lunch. It smells crazy good. Everyone, can I have your attention? Is it about lunch? No, I just wanted to apologize for my tardiness. You see, I was... Howdy. Oh shit. Fucking whatever. Howdy, folks. I'd like to make an announcement. Hey, I was... It's about lunch. Everyone cheers. But I... Shh. Lunch, lunch, lunch. She said, shh. In honor of the new semester, I've prepared something special to share with everyone for lunch. Did I call it or did I fucking call it? <laughs> that must be the smell I smelled. Indeed. That smell? You hold your breath, waiting to see what food this mysterious student has created. You've heard that he's very talented, but were the rumors true? Is this... Colonel Sanders lifts a large bucket above his head. Its contents glimmer in the light. Piled high are huge pieces of chicken, breaded and fried to a crispy golden finish. I actually can't believe that this corporate propaganda is working. I would kill for some fucking fried chicken right now, dude. <laughs> the aroma envelops you, and you begin to feel warm and safe. Colonel Sanders has filled a bucket with chicken? What a novel concept. Your stomach begins to grumble as if to say stop thinking and start eating. For years I have been developing a secret recipe for the perfect fried chicken. By my calculation, nothing less than 11 herbs and spices are required to make chicken. Dude. This is a fucking playable commercial. I actually can't believe I fell for the trap. You look around and, note that, and notice that every other student has a pen and paper and is scribbling notes as fast as they can. But that's all I'll say about that. What do you think we want your, with your stupid secret recipe, dude? <laughs> nah, my dude. Nah. I'm just uh, drafting the last will and testament. In case, uh, one of those ingredients is, uh, poison. <laughs> Got him. He looks around nervously to see if anyone else is laughing at his sick burn. You wait to see what Zinger Ashley has prepared to follow up, but she suddenly takes a different approach. 
Yeah, and I was just like writing in my diary. Dear diary, today I smelled something beautiful. I knew at that moment that only the hands of a true gentleman could fry chicken so tender. You see her body language change from how much how much fucking porn is there of Ashley? Actual genuine question. How much fucking porn is there of all right, well, uh, give me a give me a moment. I, I'm gonna have to search. Uh, I'm gonna have to search the image boards. Son of a fucking bitch. You you can't make a character like that in a meme game like this and not have porn all over the fucking place already. This game released like two three days ago, and then I oh my god. All right, Jelbaru, what do you what do you have for? It's not Ashley. It's like A A A H L A. Just two. All right, the all right, the, the classic, the um, the uh, the boob job through the heart cutout, and uh, a nice ass shot. But there's only two so far, and they're only sketches. I can only assume that the artists are working at their absolute best and refuse to upload anything less than perfection for fucking Ashley. I'm not gonna lie though, that 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 thing kind of got me. And holy shit, she's dummy fucking thick. <laughs> you see her body language change from bitter and evil to sweet and innocent as she slides closer to Colonel Sanders. She realizes that he is destined for greatness and fame with cooking skills like this. She wants him all to herself. So she's a gold digger. Mm. Oh, please. Mm. Well, Van Van the Man Man, if you don't want any... I'll take his... Whoa, hold on. I mean, I guess I'll try it. Can we talk about how Van Van is literally a JoJo character? Like, I'm actually thoroughly convinced that Van Van is a fucking JoJo character. Holy shit. He takes one bite and his eyes grow wide. He starts contorting his face as he tries to hold in his pure exhilaration and act unimpressed. Easy now. There is enough for everyone. Please, my fellow classmates, dig in. You take one of the fried piece, one of the pieces of fried chicken out of this bucket and sink your teeth into it. It's amazing. Tasting Colonel Sanders' food transports you to another dimension. Alone with your taste buds, gripping a drumstick in your hand, you float weightlessly. <laughs> what the fuck? Focus your mind and meditate. Try and identify every flavor. Savor the moment and everything it tells you about Colonel Sanders' culinary heart. Or swim toward the light. Okay. Tell me more about Colonel Sanders. The flavors in your mouth are beautiful, pure, heavenly. What a guy. Alone with the flavors, you feel something that can only be described as love. For a man? For a flavor? Are they the same? After tasting his food, you try to get some one-on-one -on -one time with Colonel Sanders. You approach Colonel Sanders. Dude, my nose is killing me. Oh my god. Colonel Sanders smiles ever so softly as you approach. He stops what he is doing and allows you to break the silence. Colonel, I wondered if I could talk to you for a second. Anything for a fellow chef. What exactly was on that chicken? <laughs> How bold to come out and ask. It's an idea I had for a new combination of flavors that will make me my fortune and establish my legacy for all time as I open a chain of highly successful fried chicken restaurants. No big deal. Why does he have a custom made chicken chicken gemstone topped cat cane? I can't even speak, he's too beautiful. It's just you and me here talking. I can keep a secret. In fact, I've got some of my own that I'd be willing to trade. What's the rush? The semester is only getting started. We've got two more whole days to get to know each other. He's clearly not going to give it up easily, but it doesn't hurt to be persistent. 
You know what they say about secrets, Colonel. Shouldn't learning be fun? Aww. You've got Moxie. I'll give you that. Colonel Sanders looks both ways to make sure you're truly alone, then leans in. You can feel his warm breath as he whispers. It's crazy for me to think that all of this is canon Colonel Sanders. Oh, this, this is how the company made this character. This is Pete Colonel Sanders, dude. Just one ingredient, but you can't tell. I use... Mm, I can't see it. It's something my great-grandmother taught me. Wow, you would have never guessed that. In fact, you're not even sure where you'd get some if you searched. While you're wrapped up in that huge revelation, you notice that Colonel Sanders has disappeared. While everyone else is still in the cafeteria, you decide to look for him. You find Colonel Sanders outside, standing in the car. He just fucking teleports, I guess. Or he really blew your mind so hard that you just fucking entered the void again. Oh, it's you again. Howdy. Sometimes, I like to come outside and look at the school buildings. I think about how my story will continue on after I've graduated. It sounds like you have big plans. I dare say the biggest. I will leave my mark on this world. You can bet on that. Alone together for the first time, you figure now is the perfect moment to show your personality to him. Neg him to show your own strength. While I'm with a big idea. To add an additional ingredient. No, dude, that's just gonna get you blown the fuck up. Modest but thoughtful. Sure. Well, uh, I just wanted to tell you that I really enjoyed your food. Now you've got his attention. <laughs> the flavors were complex but comforting. The interplay between salty, savory, and peppery. It was perfect. I appreciate the compliment, my dude. <laughs> I'm sure you'll be a big success. I know we've only met today, but I'm starting to get the same feeling about you. We should head back inside. The next lesson starts soon. You step into the massive cooking arena, where the afternoon lesson will take place. Each student gets an oven and all the tools and kitchens they could ingredients they can need. I said fucking kitchens. Wait, a stream I can watch for once. Peak quality, my guy. And yeah, no, like actually speaking colonel sanders is like legitimately super handsome it's it, it's kind of kind kind of offsetting he's too beautiful dude look at this place it's magnificent finally we got to show our stuff wait a second oh no we have to show our stuff what if i totally blow it all right i'm not gonna lie like miriam isn't exactly my type but she's pretty damn cute too as a matter of fact, all the character designs in this are like, in their own ironic sense, really fucking good. <laughs> like Ashley, dude. Why is Ashley fucking Ashley, dude? She has a fuck, dude. That's the thickest fucking ass I've ever seen. God damn. <laughs> and Van, 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 Van. <laughs> Why does Portel sound like he's about to seduce me? Do I really sound that different? Because, yeah, no, like, long story short, I got a noise complaint. So I'm just trying to, I just take the microphone, move it real, real close to my mouth, and whisper in your ear lovingly like this. For you see, I'm an ASMR streamer now. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> you're not going to blow anything, except maybe kisses to the crowd of fans you're going to earn with your signature adorable tiny food creations. Wow. Welcome, students, to the cooking arena. For today's lesson, we'll be cooking with partners. Hurry up and pair off. <laughs> oh my god, I'm a fucking slut for Colonel Sanders. Naturally, Miriam looks over at you, but unable to control yourself, you pounce on Colonel Sanders. <laughs> oh my god, I've already fucking betrayed my best friend for Colonel Sanders. Dude, I, I feel so bad for Miriam. Like, she's actually trying her best, but in a single day, she's been cucked three times already. Hey, Colonel, would you like to tackle this lesson as a team? A team of two, that is. Me and you, if that wasn't clear. 
Want to be my partner? Aww. I'm actually... I actually feel so bad for Miriam right now. Alright, dude, she struck the pose and everything, but we just turned around and just jumped on Colonel Sanders' fucking massive cock. I can't believe it. Sure, my dude. I'll prepare our station. Without you as a partner, Miriam is left standing all alone. Two different students quickly take notice. Hello, new partner. I know what I could do for for this for Clank's voice, but I'm not going to do it for the sake of your ears. Long story short, modem dial tone. If you don't know what a modem dial tone is, you're going to hate yourself. <laughs> oh my, two potential partners? I'm so sorry, gentlemen, but I don't know who to choose. <laughs> She's literally fucking crying. <laughs> it looks like you'll have to pick for her. Friend duties can be a little awkward, but that's the price you pay for not being alone for <laughs> Who do you want to ask to be Miriam's part? Oh my god, that's so sad. <coughs> I actually feel so bad for Miriam right now. I legitimately feel like an asshole. Holy shit, dude. Protect Miriam. And hate fuck Ashley. Cause god damn, do that ass. Alright, I'll... I'll have to go to Lesser of Two Evils. Definitely not Pop. Sorry, Pop, but I think Miriam will be partnering with Clank today. It's okay, I already ate. It's not entirely clear if Pop has any idea what the point of school it even is at this juncture. Clank is clearly excited to have some attention. He heats up and begins to roll back and forth. I feel so bad right now. Hold on there, fella. We don't even know the assignment yet. Technically, Clank might not have a face, but there's something charming and earnest about him. <laughs> Best boy, Clank. Tissue? I hardly know you. Hee <laughs> hee. Haha. Clank judders and a panel shakes loose. You get the impression that this is a sign of affection. <laughs> Looks like you two will be fine. Now it's time to focus on your own cooking classwork. You want to know like the really funny part? If like, if, if you fuck up and you get rejected by Colonel Sanders, then that means you literally cucked yourself by pairing up Miriam with Clank. Like Clank 100% 100 has the best Robocock that ever, anyone has ever seen. A Robocock so powerful, no human cock can dare manage it, to challenge it. So, congratulations, my dude. You played yourself. Alright, you two. For today's lesson, we're going to keep it simple. Pick a basic dish and divide up the steps. No chef is an island. It takes two flints to make a fire. You get the idea. Which dish do you suggest to your partner, Colonel Sand? It's going to be like something stupid something stupid and it's gonna be like a 30 like a 30 word long sentence describing the glorious fried chicken ever wow all right never mind Wait. <laughs> your grandmother's mashed potatoes and gravy of course steak tartar seems easy enough it's fancy and you don't even need to cook it i don't even know what that is all right I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to bite the fucking bait though. KFC, you and your goddamn corporate propaganda. I've always been something of a down home chef. I was thinking we could make something warm, inviting, comforting. Maybe mashed potatoes <gasps> and gravy? I couldn't imagine one without the other. Colonel Sanders casts a coy look at you, causing your whole face to go beet red. Embarrassed, you quickly turn away. I'll go get the potatoes. No, please, let me. Picking perfect produce is a passion of mine. <sighs> Looks like things are getting pretty fresh around here. Does someone have a crush on Colonel Sanders? We're just cooking partners. Mind your own business. 
Okay, I like act. Hold on. Can I like remove the? Can I like remove the HUD? No. Okay, dude. I I like I actually want a damn good look at Ashley right now because holy fucking shit, dude. Do you see how goddamn thick she is? And like 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 right below her, right right below her like name, you you can see where like the stockings like pinches her fucking thighs. That dude, how fucking thick is she? Oh my god. Like, holy dude, I'm actually losing my mind over Ashley. I like genuinely fucking speaking, I can't believe they made a fucking character like this. <sighs> god. Colonel Sanders Hart is my business, and you'd better keep your fingers off of my man. Did someone call for me? What is this soundtrack? Is this actually in my fucking KFC game? Oh shit! <laughs> Oh my fucking god, this song, dude. Wait. <laughs> no. This is... This is just unfucking reasonable at this point. Look at this goddamn JoJo character of a guy. With a star-shaped pompadour. <laughs> I, I can't, dude, I can't right now. I legitimately fucking can't. Ugh, no, jeez, Van Van. While I'm over- Oh my god, dude, look at the crazy fucking eyes. Alright, never mind, she's like- You can't even say Yandere, she just wants to kill you. Yandere implies that she, she has a crush on you or something. No, she just wants to murder you. While I'm over here crushing my dude's dreams, you were supposed to be taking care of our classroom. That was the deal, remember? Colonel Sanders attorney, and then she goes, oh my god, why is she like actually cute until she wants to step on your fucking dick? I actually hate this so much. Like she's actually legitimately cute until she wants to step on your fucking dick and call you a piece of shit. Look at that fucking ass though, by the way. Holy shit. Colonel Sanders returns, arms full of peeled potatoes. He tosses them into boiling water and turns his attention to you and your old friends. Oh, howdy there, Ashley. Van Van. Are we working in a quartet instead of a duet now? Oh, actually, no. It looked like my dude was struggling, so he offered to give them a hand. You know how it is. These young amateur chefs need a lot of mentoring. I was going to say, Colonel Sanders, maybe I could also teach you a thing or two about fancy food. Maybe one day you'd be able to get up to my level. <laughs> Doubt it. Don't be rude, Van Van. Personally, I have no doubts whatsoever about Colonel Sanders' ability to concoct creations worthy of admiration. After all, your fried chicken was quite spectacular. Okay, she's actually fucking adorable. I hate myself. Like, like... The wink? The fan? Not, not the fang, the, the wink, the fang, like holy shit, the, the fang, the fucking adorable fang, and the heart-shaped cleavage cutout, like dude, this is fucking illegal. Alright dude, between the, dude, the thighs, the ass, the curves in general, that fang, that wink, it's just, dude, I fucking hate Ashley, I hate Ashley so much. <laughs> But, Colonel, if you ask me, I might make a better partner for you than this thing that has positioned itself at your station. Don't you feel, deep down, that we cast complementary shadows? We fit together, like a thigh and a drumstick. It just makes sense. Nothing about this makes any sense, but one thing is clear. She's coming for Colonel if you don't watch out. Ashley is really going at you hard. You need to ask for some backup here before things get ugly. Turn to Colonel Sanders. Hunks of hunk of hunks in your time of need. <laughs> Turn to Miriam. 
<laughs> I'm actually a slut for Colonel Sanders. I'm here to learn and express myself via my cuisine, not bitter with prima donnas. Partners were chosen at the beginning of class, so let's all respect the format, okay? You turn to Colonel Sanders to confirm you're on the same page. I chose Colonel Sanders, and Colonel Sanders chose me, isn't that right? A businessman respects all fair agreements, from contracts to handshakes. I took on my dude as my partner for this activity, and I stand by it. Based on your team's behavior, I'd say you're perfect for each other. Neither of you- oh shit. Neither of you has my dude's natural talent or their loyalty. Okay, wait, actually. Okay, actually though, Colonel Sanders just fucking destroyed Ashley. Holy shit. <laughs> you two make the perfect team. <laughs> you don't have the talent or the loyalty to be with me. Get the fuck out of here, Ashley. Dude. I actually can't believe Colonel Sanders is a savage. <laughs> Being defended by Colonel Sanders leaves you feeling proud and full of potential. You look for Sprinkles in hopes that he might step in, but he's nowhere to be found. Darn those cute corgis and their short but sturdy stature. <laughs> you look down at your station and realize that, in the tension of the moment, your hands have been cooking on auto autopilot. Distracted by the drama, you've already crushed the boiled potatoes into a perfectly creamy mashed texture with plenty of butter and cream for flavor. It's as if your natural passion guided you through the steps you know so well while your attention was elsewhere. I know just what to do. Colonel Sanders extends his hand. He's holding a beautiful white porcelain gravy boat, which pours, uh, out of which pours a smooth brown gravy, smothering your nearly finished potato dish. Gravy flows down the mound of pat, ma pat I can't even speak. What is this? Gravy flows down the mound of mashed potatoes. The results look spectacular. Granny would be very proud. I I can't do this anymore, dude. This is this is too much for me. This is actually way too fucking much for me. <laughs> I'm crying. <laughs> Colonel Sanders holds out a spork to you. You reach out and grab hold of it, but he doesn't immediately let go. The two of you stand holding the same spork, and for that small moment, all of the madness and, and pressure in this crazy world stops. Your eyes lock. The moment is electric. Time stands still. If you love something, Set it free. Together, you dig the utensil into the mashed potatoes and lift a heaping sporkful up. When you see Ashley with a sinister look, you know she's plotting against you to be with Colonel Sanders. <laughs> this is too much. This is too much. And then, filled with rage and without thinking, you fling the spork full of mashed potatoes right into Ashley's stupid, beautiful face. Right between those massive fucking tits, your white, creamy load completely covering her. Wait. Van Van, do something, do something. Scooping up a finger full. Okay, okay, I know. I know, I know that he. I know that the game said. Flung it at her face. But I, I, I can't imagine anything but flinging it like right into that heart shaped cleavage. And then Van Van comes up, he just like sticks his finger between the tits, shoves it in his mouth, and is like, that's damn good cooking. <laughs> oh my god, I'm getting way too loud. Is this part of the Guilty Gear 2020 OST? <laughs> Shit feels like it, dude. Scooping up a fingerful, Van Van tastes the dripping mashed potatoes and gravy and realizes that it's delicious. Horrified by this revelation, he slinks away. Will he ever be able to cook something with so much love and integrity? Hold on right there, my dude. We do not waste food in the Rome cooking arena. 
Colonel Sanders, I expect better from you. If you throw one more spoonful, you both better be prepared to eat it from wherever it lands. <laughs> and then you take a spoonful, and then you put it right between Ashley's tits, and it's just like, well, I have to. And then you just start fucking motorboating. <laughs> oh my god. Can I hide my potato face? Man, fuck this stupid kid. Why is your JoJo character in here? Van Van is literally a JoJo character. Van Van rushes back over, a covered dish in his hand. Mashed potato. <laughs> this is a battle axe. Mashed potatoes and baby. <laughs> Pathetic. In just a few minutes, I've prepared a full meal. Gaze upon my specialty. Gray's tentacle of octopus in my silky saltwater sauce. Plated on a battle axe blade forged by my supreme chef ancestors. <laughs> Holy shit. You've ignored me for too long. That ends now. It is I who will have your first bite, and you will all look on with envy. The interrupting student rushes at Van Van and swipes a bite of his signature dish right off the plate. No, don't. Something about this dish doesn't strike my nose quite right. I think the octopus was rushed, and may have turned in the process. Wait, may have turned in the process. Sure. The results could be quite toxic. Too late. It has been eaten. Okay, dude, I don't- this- no, this- this is just going down the fucking- Oh my god, Van Van's design is like, actually, bless though, you're right. I- oh, I think I left something in the oven. I don't feel so good. And then he just gets Thanos snap. Oh my god, he got Thanos. Nope, never mind. Well, yeah, I guess. It killed him. Everyone step back. Don't take another bite. When you look back at the bucket, the rest of it is gone. You notice the tip of the tentacle being slurped up in Pop's mouth. Pop winces in pain for just a moment, then is almost immediately back to his oblivious self. Oopsie. Tastes like poison. Oh. The entire class is gathered to watch Pop's final moment. Shock has frozen the whole crowd. They are as motionless as statues. The class bell rings, disrupting the moment and snapping everyone back to reality. It would appear that Pop's enthusiasm for trying new things, despite obvious danger, has inoculated him against poisons of all kinds. Bruh. <laughs> Just bruh. I'm not sure the professors here make enough money. Um, hello? I just turned into a ghost. Ah, whatever, fuck you. Seeing that you're shaken up by that really annoying student and all his nonsense, Colonel Sanders approaches you. I'm sorry you had to go through that. Please, let me walk you home. <laughs> ghost man is kill. You follow Colonel Sanders out of the room. At night, the school building has taken on another vibe entirely. It's dark and a little more than spooky. Wait, no shit, it's more than a little spooky. Colonel Sanders stands in the quad's neon glow and speaks softly. Those mashed potatoes you made in class today. Before you go on, I want you to know, they're not a great representation of my skills. I didn't even realize I was making them. They were amazing. Tasting them, it reminded me why I became so passionate about food to begin with. Colonel Sanders is getting choked up. Okay, no, I actually never thought that seeing Colonel Sanders crying was something that I needed in my life. Like, this is just an image too beautiful. <laughs> this is Clan Ad 2. <laughs> Colonel Sanders is getting choked up. Cooking is obviously important to him, in a way that you find inspiring. Now might be the perfect time to tell him you're developing feelings for him. Colonel Sanders? Yes, my dude. There's something I need to tell you. <laughs> Hold it right there. There's something I need to tell you first. Oh, jeez. You see, when I was a boy, 
I had a dream that one day I would be the greatest chef the world has ever seen. And every day since, I have been working toward that dream. Day and night, never stopping, never resting. Also lifting a lot of weights, like so many weights. We should follow our dreams with all of our hearts, that our souls may grant them like wishes floating on a shooting star. Oh. Hey, no, I... you... Shut up. I'm supposed to be the one here to say inspirational stuff and be the star of the story. Are we forgetting that your cooking literally killed a guy? You can't prove that. Yo, okay, real talk. If you if you take some fucking, uh, like... If you take, like, the deep-fried glowing eyes and you put it right here, this is fucking Omaiwa Moshinderu right here. Like, dude... You're already dead as soon as you've seen this. Hmm. I also saw you kill that guy. What was his name? Somewhere in the distance, you hear a long, sad sigh. Forget him. We were talking about me. Me, 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 me. I'm the hero. That's... I can't even believe what fucking game I'm playing. I, uh, I think I left the fridge door open. Later, nerds. How dare you threaten me just as I was letting down my guard and connecting with another chef on an emotional level. Be afraid. Be very afraid of me because I'm a monster. See, is he rhyming on purpose or is that just a coincidence? But before you can discuss syntax any further, it's a turn-based fight sequence. What will you do? I fucking hate this game. This game fucking sucks. What a piece of shit. This game fucking blows. I actually hate it. You decide to go on the attack. <laughs> Cook with love. One entire damage. It just got real. That attack really upset Spork Monster. Spork Monster goes at the attack. This bit hot gravy at you. You take one damage. This is... Defend with trepidation. <laughs> you continue to stay back and endure whatever comes your way. Seems like a pretty weird strategy to be able to... Sure. You do you. Fork Monster focuses her mashed mind and draws an energy from Mother Earth. What the fuck is this? I... Spork Monster is no quitter. Buffed up and ready to rumble. They go on the attack once again. <laughs> Spork Monster uses... You till a tensile. You take two damage. You take much more damage, you're gonna die. Sport monster is oozing cheese sauce onto the lawn of claw. I wonder who's gonna have to clean that up. <laughs> My ultimate attack, rounded edge. Vile villain, your reign of terror stops here. Colonel Sanders summons the energy of a thousand chickens. <laughs> I power <laughs> Please tell me there's a gallery. There has to be a gallery, man. Come on. I need a gallery. <laughs> Pot pie power pinch does 10 damage. Wowza. You saved me. <laughs> An injured spork monster spews steam into the night. Bear the wretched beast. You manage to tamp down your disgust at the sight of this gnarly beast long enough to realize that he is still a living creature, with a pure soul who deserves your pity, not your wrath. Be gone, beast, and don't you dare come back for a follow-up encounter tomorrow. I won't forget this, and I certainly won't be back like you said. The spork monster scuttles off into the night. The defeated monster have left behind a special item. It appears at first to be a cookbook, but upon closer inspection, it's so much more. 
It's a book of magic spells with a golden chicken on the cover. <laughs> you open the cover and find a library card tucked inside. The last name to have it signed out is Borco. Hmm. Borco. That name sounds strangely familiar. Your blood is pumping as you stand in the quiet of the night, holding the mysterious book in your hands. As you come down from your battle buzz, you realize that your final attack has left you completely de depleted. The world around you begins to fade away. Without any energy to keep your eyes open, darkness overtakes you. I really don't know what to say anymore. The image of Colonel Sanders flashes before your eyes as you fall asleep. He must have helped you get home. In your tired state, you don't know if you could have made it without him. What a guy. You want to thank him, but you don't have the strength to utter a single word. You feel your covers being pulled up over you as you are tucked in tightly. Good night, my Colonel. In your dream, you're together with Colonel Sanders. For some reason, Sprinkles is also there. Instructing your love. Dreams are weird. Yeah, that sounds about right. In all glorious five frames per second that was animated in. Holy shit. You awake on day two and attempt to process the wild visions you had. Were they memories or premonitions? And then there was that secret ingredient that Colonel Sanders went ahead and told you outright. Not much of a secret, huh? It's probably just because he already trusts you so much. Sure, that makes sense. We'll go with that. You meet up with your bestie in front of the school. Before you can tell her about the encounter with the spork monster, she launches into a story of her own. Okay, I know this might sound a little strange, but I think I might be... Um... I think I might like Clank. Like him? Like... Like, like? <laughs> I know, it sounds like it's moving too fast, but there's something about him. I like him. Like, like him. Okay, real talk, all of Miriam's portraits are like super fucking cute. I really like Miriam. And yes, she wants to fuck the robot. We got to talking after class, and he's actually a totally sweet guy. Not only that, but he's really smart. He told me all kinds of stories about Colonel Sanders. Did you know that Colonel Sanders was the most popular kid in his high school? No, but that make, that does make complete sense. Yeah, but he was so popular, he was voted prom king at a school he didn't even go to. And he was and what? And was also the convertible that he himself rode in at the front of the He was so popular, he was voted prom king at a school he didn't go to. And also was a convertible that he himself rode in at the front of the... Wait, so you're... So you're saying that... He was a convertible that he rode in. Are you telling me that he walked? <laughs> I don't understand this. I'm thinking maybe something got lost in the pressure cooker language translation here. Either way, maybe it'd be best if you took it slow with this new boy, like I am with Colonel Sanders. <laughs> yeah, I'm taking it real slow with Colonel Sanders. <laughs> Ugh, Colonel, I'm trying to mash potatoes, but you're so dummy thick and the clap of your ass cheeks keeps alerting the spork monsters. <laughs> Can we talk about how Miriam is just constantly striking Jojo poses? There isn't a single normal portrait of her, it's always a fucking Jojo pose. Like, look at this! Look at her hands! Like... <laughs> oh my god. You and Colonel Sanders? The coolest guy in school? The most famous student to ever attend University of Cooking School Academy for Learning? You're a thing now? We definitely connected yesterday. <laughs> Sure he did. You're great. Why wouldn't he be into you, I guess? Laughing at the implication that you or Colonel Sanders might be a thing is definitely not cool. You are great. You have an idea about how to prove that your love is real. Well, if he's not into me, why did he tell me one of his secret ingredients? Your bestie's eyes light up. 
Of a secret ingredient? Yeah, I just said that. A secret ingredient. Is there a dramatic echo in here? Miriam checks to make sure you're alone before continuing. So, this summer, while I was on vacation with my family, a lovely man approached me in the botanical garden where I was wandering. This can't be good. He told me all about his passion for spices, secret spices. The man even gave me some to show me what he meant. He said it was a powder created from a super duper rare dried flower, from super duper rare dried flower powder. Okay. And that if I did him a big favor, I could have some of my own, so I sucked his fucking cock. Please, Miriam, don't tell me. So I filled my suitcase with them and brought them home. He was so nice, he even met me at the gate when I arrived. Later, when I, co when I cooked with him, a very strange feeling came over me, and the flavor is unlike anything I'd ever tasted. I think you're being very liberal with the meaning of spices here. Whatever. Anyhow, we both share an interest in cooking, so we stayed in touch, you know, like pen pals. I bet he would love to know more about new spices. Well, I'm definitely not supposed to share Colonel Sanders' secret recipe. And besides, I only know the one ingredient, so I thought it'd be much use to anyone. Please, please, please! It would mean, it would mean the world to me! No one, has, no one has to know it came from you or Colonel Sanders. Uh, tell her the ingredient or make up a fake one. Alright, I'm really cucking my best friend in favor of Colonel Sanders' fake ingredient. You quickly think of a fake ingredient name. I don't know, how about... It was Eye of New. I know, sounds like some kind of witch's potion, but what can you do? I have knew. Wow! Her eyes light up imagining such a thing, and you figure that you've satisfied her curiosity and she'll move on. However, she immediately turns around and does some thumb typing on her phone that you can't quite see. That's probably not good. Before you can ask her to confirm that she was definitely not texting secrets to other people, you're interrupted. A wind rushes in. Cherry blossoms fill the air. It's Colonel Sanders. He's arriving at school. On a fucking horse. Alright, run to Colonel Sanders in admiration. You decide that the best way to show Miriam how serious you and Colonel Sanders are would be to run to him. Surely, he'll sweep you up onto the back of his stallion and you'll ride away together. That'll show her good. Oh, Colonel, my Colonel! <laughs> However, your sudden movement surprised the horse and it rears up, kicking you directly in the face. And you die. In the darkness, you see a vision. Ooh, my dude! Oh, whatever, I'm not gonna do the ghost voice. I'm here to deliver you a message. Not oh, this guy. It is important that you remember this, exactly as I say it. If you forget, the world could end, so you know it's serious. I have been trapped in a realm beyond, but a great prophecy relies on my return. Only you can save me. All you need to do is repeat my name three times, and that name is... <laughs> but before he can continue, you suddenly awake. Wow. This is... The oh my god, this is like Valhalla all over again. It's like fucking, uh, yeah, it's like Rad Shiba all over again. <laughs> oh, hey, I'm Rad Shiba, but my real name is, yeah, 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 no one cares. All right, Jill, have you heard of this? Like, fucking, <laughs> it's just Rad Shiba too. Ah, oh, jeez. You awake to find Colonel Sanders tending to you. He roused you back to life with a satchel of secret spices. Or is that just his natural seasoned musk? Compliment the craftsmanship of his horse. <laughs> Lean in for a kiss. Okay, but you see, it's day two of three. So if you compare this to an actual semester, we've been dating for like a month and a half. So it's fine. <laughs> just, just lean in for a kiss. What could go wrong? Um, this is. Fuck it. 
<laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. You've known him for a day. Are you really sure? I guess you must be. <laughs> you put your arms around Colonel Sanders' neck and pull him in for a kiss. But he turns his face and you awkwardly kiss his ear. You can feel him shudder. Oh no. Bamboozled again. <laughs> your soul crawls inside of itself and you instantly die of embarrassment. Game of- oh, god damn it. Am I- is this actually- Ah, oh, fuck me. <laughs> I wanted to believe. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, Oh, okay, there we go. I did it. I fucking died, I guess. Well, that was a pretty boring... Whatever. Yes, run, run to him, get slapped. And then... Maybe you shouldn't be riding a horse to school. And maybe you shouldn't be running up to animals, you don't know. It's hard to say who was in the wrong here. Well, one thing is for sure, that Colonel Sanders is pretty dreamy. That horse has beautiful shoes. I could really feel how smooth and sturdy they were when they were pressing into my face. <coughs> That's nice to hear. No one truly appreciates good craftsmanship anymore. And with that, Colonel Sanders disappears into the school, leaving you and Miriam to follow. When you enter the classroom, you can see your two rivals, Ashley and Van Van, are doing something bad. By the way they're hi hiding, you know it must be really bad. Like counterfeiting recipes bad, experimenting with restricted ingredients bad, summoning a demon bad? You try and get a peek over Van Van's hulking sho shoulder, but he sees you coming. Whoa, whoa there, little one. I'm not sure you're ready to handle this. Why don't you make like a bee and mind your own wax, honey? Jesus Christ, the fucking crazy eyes. Uh... Don't be immature. You immediately dress the rivals down for their immature behavior. Holy fuck, dude, Ashley's thighs. Culinary school is to be respected. This kind of nonsense is a waste of everyone's time. Now you've upset <sighs> them. Oh, and you're the emperor of cooking, are you? You make the rules? I'm not sure you'd know a good meal if it ate you. Being the best chef in the world takes more than just culinary skills. It takes creativity. It takes panache. Pa pa or panic. Whatever. I don't like to assume it's panache. Also, that tongue sticking out, that's like actually really cute. But she's still looking down on me, so it makes me really sad. Like the tongue sticking out thing, it's just a little, it's a little blip. You know, you know. Blip. <laughs> and it doesn't hurt to use a little evil. You finally get a look at what it is they were hiding, and you instantly recognize it. It's a book, just like the one you found after your encounter with the spork monster. That's the same book that I found last night in the quad. I wonder whose face that is in the front of the class. I don't know, yeah, I saw that too though. Ashley immediately elbows Van Van, who hides the book behind his back. I don't know what you're talking about. That book is a family heirloom, and its contents are secret. You notice that they haven't just been studying the book. They've got pop pinned to... Oh, they've got pop pinned to the wall, and they're tossing potato skins at him as he tries to catch them in his mouth. We're playing! Before you can dig in any further, you're interrupted by the arrival of more students. It's almost time for class. Oh, fucking Clank. Clank must be running late. He's in such a hurry that he rolls right over Van Van's meaty foot. <gasps> hey, watch it, you bucket of bolts. You watch how you talk to him. He didn't do anything. Fucking bzzz. Uh, who do you think you're talking to? I've never heard such language, not even from a stand mixer. <laughs> womp womp. <laughs> no, your mother was a stand mixer. <laughs> Yo, dude, look at the sheer energy of Van Van here. Oh my god. That's actually glorious. And oh my god, Ashley's hips, dude. 
Ashley is so fucking thick. <laughs> it's unreal. Van Van jumps to attack Clank, but Clank shocks Van Van, sending him flying across the room. <laughs> Ooh, those are crazy eyes. Protect me, Colonel Sanders. These crazed men are about to come to blows. I think it must be over me, but I'm not interested in either of them. Ashley's tone has completely changed in an instant. She bats her eyelashes at Colonel Sanders. Surely he must know that this is a ruse, right? Yo, can we talk about like the point? Like he, he's got the fucking pointing, pointing with the little chicken staff in it. Dude, he's like, oh my God, that's like Phoenix Wright posture. Bro, Ashley for elsewhere. <laughs> Bro. Like dude, like real talk. Ace Attorney games, but you replace Phoenix Wright with Colonel Sanders. Like this right here, this is big energy Colonel Sanders. <laughs> Gentlemen, get a hold of yourselves. Save it for the arena at least, or don't. Honestly, what do I care? I've got lofty career aspirations to focus on. Maybe I can help you with your business plan. Just then, Sprinkles arrives to signal the true start of the class day. He's panting, which doesn't seem that abnormal. He's a professor, but he's also a dog. Students, students, please take your seats. I apologize for my late arrival. I spent the morning chasing after a car all around town, and my tiny legs are very, very tired. But I'm here now, and I hope you're ready to learn. Rub his furry dog belly. He loves it. <laughs> Sprinkle stops in his tracks and sniffs the air around you. Something has him in a trance. It's the scent left on you from Colonel Sanders. Sprinkles jumps on you and licks your face. Down, boy, down. Oh, oh. Does he just pull out German here? Is this German? Fucking off top in. Or something. I don't even know. What? Like, okay, this is a fucking objection. Like, real talk? This, this is Ace Attorney. <laughs> Dude, this is literally just Ace Attorney. That command shouted by Colonel Sanders has snapped Sprinkles out of his trance. I wonder what's up with that. Sorry, I got a little carried away. After he catches his breath, Sprinkles regains control of the classroom. Without further ado, we'll review the global history of my favorite fowl, the chicken. You want to pay attention to the lesson. Truly, you do. Which is why, at 1776, at the signing of the Declaration of Independence, it was a chicken who first signed their name. But you can't help but daydream about Colonel Sanders, and you miss most of the important parts. Well, you got Colonel Sanders, the most important part. When you come to, Swinkles is holding a tray of food in front of you. Well, my dude? Naturally, this appears to you to be a simple platter. Which item do you want to sample? Uh, the pepper, a glass of water, or the dog? What? Take a bite of the dog biscuit. Forehead. Oh no, pepper. <laughs> a, bright, a brightly colored pepper stands out from the other items. It sparkles in a most eye-catching way. So naturally, you reach out, grab it, and eat it right away. However, your body is not prepared for the heat. <laughs> Pepper has triggered an intense fight. They really like transporting you to a different dimension, don't they? An intense spice hallucination. It feels like forever as you trip through the universe. Yeah, it's Ghost Guy. Important message. Avenge my death. Fulfill your destiny. All you have to do is cough. To fulfill your destiny, you have to cough. <laughs> Sorry, I think I still have some spice stuck in my throat. It's fine. I'll work through to fulfill the prophecy. You must feel yourself begin to regain consciousness. Aw. You come to and everyone is staring at you. That pepper was the last of its kind on earth and now it's gone forever. You think to yourself, geez, I should pay better attention. We all make mistakes. I'm sure we will forgive you someday. Come on, it's time for lunch. Before anyone can relax, the cafeteria lights dim, 
and your rivals enter to make a dramatic announcement. Today's lunch will be prepared via... I'm, I'm not ready for... I'm not ready for the poses. I'm really not prepared for the poses. Also, holy shit, that shows off Ashley's thighs and ass so much. Do you see those fucking thighs? Oh, and the stockings too. Dude, I'm losing my fucking mind. I'm act like I'm actually losing my fucking mind just looking at Ashley's thighs. Holy shit. The level of theatrics with these two is off the charts. The man they stop wasting. <laughs> I challenge you. No anime girl is so fucking thick. No anime girl is so fucking thick, so you can damn well rely on Western artists hired by KFC to draw the thickest fucking lines. Holy shit. Those thighs are sent from God. Alright, you're on. Fuck it. A bit of lunchtime competition, eh? Count me in. If I have to wipe... Wipe the tables with you fools before I set my lunch down on it, then so be it. I'm not the fool, you're the fool. Fool? Good one, Van Van. I like your grumption, my dude. I'll be watching your performance. Just as things reach a boiling point, Sprinkle steps in. Surely he'll put a stop to this madness. Now, now, students, please settle down. This is a classroom, not a sporting court. Sportsing court. Finally, a little sense. You sigh, you breathe a sigh of relief. It makes it worse that they knew that what they were doing. They definitely want porn of this character made. I would also like to point out that these are now characters in the official Colonel Sanders canon. Yo, dude, real talk? If I could go to like KFC and get like a bucket of chicken with Ashley on it, I would freak out so hard. Like, holy shit, it would be the thickest fucking bucket they have. <laughs> At least, not until we turn on the timer. Just then, a huge light blasts you in the face, flashing the words timer ready. That's what I'm talking about. Aw, he goes a, he goes a woo. Oh. <laughs> oh my god, that's adorable. Little, little corgi. Little corgi. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my god, that's adorable. I stand corrected. The hard way was, the hard way built solidly a foundation of confidence that cannot be swept away. And that's an original quote by me, in case anyone was wondering. I hope its message lifts you to victory. Like a diamond, I was formed under pressure, and now is my chance to shine. I will defeat you myself. Holy shit, she's holding a fucking butcher's knife. Wait, she's actually going to murder me. You had his chicken, and you made mashed potatoes and gravy on day one. And you're feeling like you can really impress him again here. It's time to boil some water for the potatoes. Think fast. If the timer runs down, you'll be forced to pick randomly. Uh, what does water boil at? Um, that. How could he- wait, this is a fucking timer-based quiz? Winner gets to rub my furry belly. Wowza. You're going to need to season this chicken before you cook it. You don't know Colonel Sanders' recipe exactly, but you have an idea. How many herbs and spices? Eleven. Wowza. Tail wagging intense up. I fucking hate this. Dude, they had to make Ashley with the intent of there being porn of her. Like, I'm gonna go on Twitter and I'm going to search so much for Ashley porn. Like, you actually don't understand. Like, I, 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 I'm morally obligated to touch my dick to Ashley. Because holy fucking shit, dude, those thighs. What state of mind offers the most flavor? Oh, God. Gratitude, Chuck. Gratitude, sure. You must never take this opportunity for granted if you hope to succeed. 
Your classmates are rooting for you, but Ashley is simply stronger and faster than you. You better pick up the pain. <laughs> Why am I going to die? When you were a child, your father told you to never forget where you came from. Every day, you meditate on his advice and draw energy from that place. Where does he get the, the shoulder of Orion? A, a small town where big dreams are born. <laughs> Kentucky. This is your shot and you're not going to miss it. Oh my god, it's another fuck. Oh. You're trying to shut out the noise of the arena and focus on your cooking. The sound of success. Sizzling. Oh no. Wait, silent, sizzling, bubbly. Wait, I don't know. I believe in you, my dude. <laughs> he's actually cheering you on. Which would be awesome, except knowing he's watching makes you totally forget what you were doing. Now all you can think about is Colonel Sanders. Spoonful of grit. What? Oh. <laughs> it was all just Colonel Sanders. Uh, one dessert cookbook. Which do you take? What a hunk. Shouldn't you be focused on the challenge? You're falling behind. Uh, I, I, I tried to click wedding vows. What does that have to do with crafting spectacular fried chicken and delicate baked... Dude, I'm like... I am so confused right now. Woof woof. At the next station over, Ashley has already begun plating elements of her dish. It's colorful and complex. To make up time, you toss your biscuit though into a stand mixer. As you do, the crowd gasps. Yeah, yikes. I know you love nothing more than seeing a fellow appliance utilized in a kitchen battle, but sometimes I mean sacrificing the personal touch. You might not have any hands, but my dude does, and a good chef needs to be touching the dough to know when it's properly mixed. There's an easy way and a hard way. You don't get far by going the easy way. When you hear everyone talking, you realize how serious your error was. You immediately shove your hand into the mixer to rescue your dough before it's overmixed, and your hand gets cut off. Oh shit. What the hell? What? Is this because I got one question wrong? Why is like the entire world collapsing? Colonel Sa Sanders shakes his head in shame. What you often find is that the easy way can turn out much, much more difficult. Everyone stop what you're doing right now. This battle is over. It can't be. I was so close to finishing my dish. Sweetheart, look at your hand. You simply can't go on. Aw, that's too bad. And here I am with a completed dish, ready to serve. Surely that makes me the winner by default. Dude, she's so fucking devious. I would hate fuck the the ever-living shit out of Ashley, you don't understand. No, no, it wouldn't be fair to compare the two on account of my dude's injury. You see, Sprinkles begin to lick his doggy chops as he locks onto the dish. But I suppose you could tell us, no, you should at least tell us what you've prepared. Well, because I'm the sweetest, I skip, I skip straight to dessert. Under this white chocolate dome, you'll find a, oh shit, under this white chocolate dome, you'll find a wide array of delights, taking you on a journey of flavor that tastes good and tells a story of excellence. I was going to ask my dude to do the honor, but since you're injured, I'm afraid that pouring this creamer of delicate hot chocolate sauce might be too difficult. Colonel Sanders, if you wouldn't mind lending me your strong, steady hand- Dude, I would hate fuck this, the ever-living shit out of Ashley. You devious bitch. You fucking thick ass devious bitch. <laughs> Colonel Sanders pours a hot chocolate sauce on top of the dome, causing it to melt away, revealing the ingredients hidden within. Inside you, inside you find a delicate fried cheese croquet, atop a slice of honeycomb, ice cream two ways, tender nugget, and pearls of blueberry galay. That is really fucking excessive. Holy shit. <laughs> Colonel Sanders seems intrigued, but perhaps not as impressed as he dips his finger into in the chocolate sauce. Mm. 
Simplicity isn't your strong suit, is it, Ashley? <gasps> oh, you. <laughs> As he places a sauce-covered finger into his lips, Ashley leans over and whispers something into his ear. A dab of sauce sticks to his mustache. Put yourself between Colonel Sam. <laughs> Internalize rage. Your rage burns so intensely within your eyes that they burst into flames. The flames cause your... The flames cause your eyebrows to catch fire and turn to ash. And they fall off of your face, which means people will have a hard time understanding your emotions for the rest of the semester, perhaps forever. Ashamed of by your... Embarrassed and ashamed by your poor performance. Not to mention your crispy fried brow. You run to the quad to be alone. What the fuck? The beautiful weather feels like an insult. Inside of you, a storm rages. It's Colonel Sanders. He's probably here to tell you that he and Ashley are in love and have decided to get married. He won't even ask you to cater his wedding because you're a terrible chef and an awful person. You try to hide from him, but he approaches you directly. I know you're hurting right now. Not just from the devastating loss, but from that run-in with the mixer and that small fire. We should get that checked out. I'm fine. Can't you just leave me alone? I'm a loser. I'm not fit to fill your fryer. I'll never be a master chef. Failure is a part of life. Not just for you, but for all of us. Do you think I've never failed at anything before? <laughs> okay, for a moment at the start of the song, I, I was thinking that... <laughs> oh my god. Whoever made this game probably gets paid a dollar every time they use a food describing adjective. <laughs> oh my god! For a moment, when this song started, I thought it was like like a like a slow violin cover of um the Madoka Magica opening. Like I was genuinely under the impression. That's exactly what I think. <laughs> this is a clan ad song, no doubt about it. <laughs> this game is so fucking cursed. Well, then think again. I wasn't always the man you see before you. Enrolled in culinary school, incredibly handsome, successful, motivated. Well, handsome, sure, I was born that way. But I've walked other paths and arrived at dead ends. I was passionate about life. But I failed as an obstetrician. I was passionate about justice, but I failed as a lawyer. I was passionate about livestock, but I even failed as a mule handler. That one was especially humiliating. Mules can be so cruel. I lost my business partner to a gunfight, and I lost my innocence when I picked up a firearm and put a bullet in my rival. He survived, for a while anyhow. I didn't know... Are you actually going to tell me that Colonel Sanders is a battle-hardened, tried-and-true fucking... I don't, I don't even know what to say. This is like the canon Colonel Sanders that we're forced to live with. People see my delicate ribbon tie and my well-kept beard and assume I've got it all together. Which is true now, but it hasn't always been. Sounds like this guy could really use a hug. I resolved then that I was going to amount to something. No amount of hours, labor, or money would deter me from giving the best I had to give. As Colonel Sanders changes focus, you can see something ignite inside of him. A burning passion. One has to remember that every failure can be a stepping stone to something better. My new dream is pure. It's honest. It's something that a humble man in a crisp white suit can be proud of. Alright, I'm not gonna lie. Outside of, like, the obvious parody, th these are some powerful words. Like, like, yeah, no, like, seriously, these are... <laughs> this is a hell of a message. I will create a new chain of chicken restaurants that will bring joy to the entire world and make up for my past misdeeds. Yay! Just as your moment grows intimate, you're interrupted by a threatening, shadowy presence. <sighs> this is a poor 
Marco. It is I. I know I said I wouldn't be back. And after the whole fight to the death thing, maybe you don't really want to see me anymore, but I just wanted to say I was wrong to attack you, and I apologize. I know what it's like having to always look over your shoulder. Monster problems, am I right? Aw, thanks, Borko. What the fuck? He just has a name? Okay, wait. I'm glad there's no hard feelings. Getting jumped by a giant creature in the dark at night can really rile a person up. I also want to apologize for the way I switched right into attack mode. I know that you're strong, and cooking school can put a person under a lot of stress. I actually used to go to this school. I wasn't always a spork monster, you see. I don't believe it. You were a human once. Well, no. I was a golden retriever, but I was still a student. Until one day, some mean kids cast with a magic spell book cast a dark enchantment on me, and I was forever transformed. A magic spell book? Precisely. I'd procured a copy for myself, but somewhere along the way I've lost it. If you find such a book, I beg of you, respect it. You're a powerful chef and shouldn't rely on such dark and evil magic. No, you should be protecting the innocent from those who would cheat them through sorcery and guile. Is this even the same fucking game anymore? This game has switched genres like three fucking times now. Holy shit. If you need me, don't fear. I will be there. It sounds like there are some bad cooks in the kitchen of life. My dude, together, I am sure we can defeat them. Come back to my hideaway and we can discuss a personal invite. You can't imagine what Colonel Sanders' home must be like, but it sounds like you're about to find out. Stepping inside a Sanders' home. It's a picture of him as a baby with the fucking goat. He was literally born with a goatee. I can't believe it. Stepping inside Sanders' home, surrounded by his things, you start to feel a special bond with him. <laughs> well, from Clan Ad to whatever the fuck this is, to Clan Ad to this. This is Clan Ad 2. And it is a really clean looking house. Holy shit. Like, yeah, no, it's like, it's like this, you know, it's like a simple, rustic feel. Like, you know, a little, just a fancied up Kentucky cottage. I actually can't believe that the game got me to say that. His home is a fancied up Kentucky cottage. Colonel fucking Sanders, you absolute mad lad. It looks like you live such an exciting life, Colonel Sanders. Every day can be an adventure if you approach it with the right attitude. Long ago, I made the decision to never stop searching, never stop working, never stop imagining. Have you been working on any recipes of your own lately? I'm always excited to talk about food with another ambitious chef. Well, there is something. It's just a side dish that I've been tinkering with, trying to find the right balance of flavors and textures. I'm not sure I've nailed it yet, but I'm close. Colonel Sanders' eyes perk up as he starts to wonder what dish you might be describing. It's meant to pair with something spicy or something crispy. Both, perhaps? Now you've got him right where you want him. Should you reveal your new creation to him or keep it a secret just for you? Secrets are meant to be shared. You decide that you're as ready as you'll ever be to share your original cooking with Colonel Sanders. Before you can talk yourself out of it, you decided to head in, dive in head first. You reach into your lunch bag for a special dish that you've been keeping on ice all day. I present to you my original coleslaw. The shredded cabbage dish glistens in the light of Colonel Sanders. Lux, Lux? Sure, hide away. Magnificent. Together, you chow down on the creamy slaw until just a spoonful remains in the bowl. Do you mind if I hold on to the last bite? I'd like to have it around so I can admire its taste later and think back on this moment. It bothers me how the music is actually good. Yeah? I'm not gonna lie, the soundtrack for this game is unironically really really impressive holy fucking shit dude the music in this game is so powerful this is clan ad music you're right 
You could offer to make him more, but he seems like a very sentimental kind of guy. Sure, why not? Please make yourself comfortable. I'll be back in just a moment. He realized now would be the perfect time to do some snooping. Around the room are various items that you can look closer at. Each item seems to radiate memories and emotions. Tap on an item to know more about the kernel. Aha, oh, fuck. I want to, like, click on everything, but... Yeah, no, my biggest curiosity is the herb. You take a closer look at the large urn sitting on a nearby pedestal. There's a plaque on it. It's dusty, but when you wipe it off, you can read the inscription. It says, Here lie the ashes of all my past careers and business failures. Wow. I, I don't know why, but that's like way more emotional than I expected it to be. Shit. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> Alright, what's this? A lock of silver hair is woven through the teeth of the comb. Upon further inspection, you realize that the hair therein isn't just silvery in color. It's actually made of spun silver. <laughs> I grow silver on my hair. This must be where he keeps the secret recipe. You think for a moment, what number is important to Colonel Sanders? Then it dawns on you. <laughs> as soon as you turn the dial to 11-11-11, <laughs> the safe opens. Inside it, you find a single note. Can chicken be prepared sashimi style? <laughs> what the fuck? Oh. Oh my god. Okay, that scared the shit out of me. That was loud. <laughs> you open the door to Colonel Sanders' closet and find a row of his signature white suits hanging within. You take off, you take one off his hanger and try it on. The jacket is a bit big for you, but it's soft and comfortable. You give yourself a deep hug, breathing in his scent. They say that home is where the heart is. Is this what they meant? Okay, real talk? Like, this is, like, one of the most, like... Like, when I see, like, you know, this particular action, like, putting putting on, like, an oversized coat or something and just, like, hugging yourself, like, that is, like, one of the most, I don't know, emotionally powerful things for me. Because it's, like, I actually understand that. It's... Like, this is legitimately powerful. Before you can look any further, you hear, you hear Colonel Sanders returning. He has a new dish that he has been working on, and he wants you to taste it. You try to act casual until he asks you why you're wearing his jacket. Aww. I don't usually loan those out, but I must say, it does look good on you. Oh crap, the jacket! You forgot to tell, take it off. Make a big move. Fess up and tell- Oh my god. <laughs> Confess to Colonel Sanders? Shit. Alright, no, no, no smooth actions. Just say it like it is. You confess. I think I must- I've developed feelings for you. I might be developing feelings for you too, but I'm concerned. I can't let anything get in the way of my dreams. Overwhelmed, you take off the jacket and run for the door. But the thought of leaving Colonel in the midst of such an emotional breakthrough gives you pause. You stop yourself. Colonel? Hmm. Yes, my dude? I honestly think this may be the beginning of something wonderful. I think you're right. We should take things slow. You talk late into the night and drift off into a slum- Oh my god, I just butchered that. You talk late into the night and drift off into a slumber. Dream sequence! I 
I, I really don't know what to say about any of this. You awake to a beautiful morning in Colonel Sanders' hideaway. Did you make the right decision on how to respond to Colonel Sanders? Only time will truly tell. Today is a day that could change the rest of your life. Your thoughts are interrupted when Colonel Sanders emerges into the room. He's holding a gorgeously pr plated breakfast, and your mouth waters at the sight of it. Here's a simple breakfast I just whipped up. It's meticulous. <laughs> you take Colonel Sanders' food, and it takes you on a journey. When you return, he's waiting to ask you an important question. So, would you say that we're the perfect match? How presumptuous. My cuisine and your taste buds, that is. Such confidence. Such grace. Could he be the world's greatest gift to cookery? Flatter him. You know, I think we might make a great team. A single tear begins to pull in the corner of his eye as he gazes out the window. And with the right business partner, I know I can't fail. Business partner? Could he be talking to you? It's all happening so quickly. Overcome with emotion and confused by your feelings, you're on the verge of tears. Unable to speak, the only answer you can find is to run out the door and get home. There's still one more day of school after all. The University of Cooking School Academy for Learning waits for no one. You get home to find something very surprising. Your best friend is waiting there for you. Where have you been? I... Because I had one heck of a night. I've been so desperate to talk to you about it, but I couldn't find you. And I got worried that something has happened to you. It's okay. I was just... But now that it turns out you're fine, I can finally get you up to speed on the saga of Miriam. Sure, but... You will not believe what just happened to me after school yesterday. I went on a date. Yeah, and, and, and then she got the... She got Clank's big vibrating robo cock inside of her. I think I can believe that. Since I've been partner up with Clank, he'd asked me to go out with him. Of course I told him, you better keep your dials turned to polite and respectful. I'm not that kind of girl. But he was just interested in seeing some one-on-one -on -one time together and getting to know me. So I said, yeah, sure, I can get to know the little metallic guy. Long story short, he took me skydiving with his friends. Holy shit. And things quickly spiraled out of control. Wait. Skydiving with his friends and things spiraled out of control. Why does this sound like a gangbang NTR vape dojin? I'm actually concerned. <laughs> and now I'm not really sure where we stand. You don't give Miriam time to tell her whole story, however. Bottling up the details of your own night is just too much to bear. And I went on a date too, back to Colonel Sanders' house, where I spent the night with him. You... what? Nothing happened, but the emotional connection. Wowzers. Miriam tells you to move on from the whole Colonel Sanders objection and fo focus on school. Good decision. If being obsessed with Colonel Sanders is wrong, you don't want to be right. After a short argument, you both agree to go your separate ways. Wait, that's... I'm not gonna lie, that's actually like really sad to hear. Like, like, yeah, like an argument with your best friend because of your crush. That's, I, I'm, that's like legitimately painful to think about. Holy fuck. Also, we get a damn good look at Ashley's thighs. Like, look at those fucking thighs, man. Why? Oh, dude, those are some blessed fucking thigh highs. When you arrive at school, you encounter your rivals in the quad. You can tell from a distance that they're picking on Pop, though he himself might not quite grasp that fact. Because, you know, he's Pop. What's your swirly? It sounds delicious. Oh, it's great. I'll order you up one right away. I'll have my swirly with sprinkles, please. <laughs> sprinkles is a dog and a treat. 
You can get your swirly dip too. Why don't you pick on someone your own size? Mm, because I'm literally the biggest person at this school? There is that horse Colonel Sanders rides to school, but who would dare pick on such a gentle and beautiful creature? You've got some nerve, my dude, suggesting I pick on a defenseless horse. Now you're twisting my words, and I won't have it. You clench your fist, but the injury from yesterday's mixer incident makes you wince in pain. Doesn't look like you can go on cooking like that. Might as well give up. I'll never give up. Ever. Colonel Sanders arrives, just as it appears things are close to boiling over. A naturally intuitive person, he senses that something has been going on. Is everyone excited for the final day of school? My dude, how's that hand feeling? I'm sure you'll be back in fighting form by the by this afternoon. Uh -huh. Aren't you concerned about my hands, Colonel? Yesterday I almost broke a nail winning so hard. Technically, I don't believe a winner was decided, but your presentation was quite impressive. What is he doing complimenting her? Mm. But what about the flavor of my delicate, warm, gooey chocolate sauce? It was clear that you're passionate about how your food is received. That's a lot of words to say it was bland. Excuse me, my dude. I'm more than capable enough to speak for myself. <gasps> Maybe you could tell me more of your thoughts as we walk into class, Colonel? I'm always, in I'm always interested in discussing the fine art of fine foods. See you inside, my dude. Annoyed by Colonel Sanders' inability to see Ashley for who you know she really is, you walk across the quad to get some distance. In an attempt to distract yourself from how slighted you feel by that interaction with Ashley, you take out the spell book you recovered yesterday and start flipping through the pages. Whoa, that's that book? It looks like bad news. Oh, never mind. I guess they're still friends. Cool. It's just something I found lying around. It would appear to be some sort of grimoire, but I don't really believe in that magic stuff. A grimoire? Like a book of books? Oh shit. A book of books? Did I really just say that? Holy shit, I'm retarded. <laughs> like a book of spells? I don't know. You would spend so much time decorating a magic book if it weren't really powerful. I can think of one surefire way to find out. You open to a page covered with arcane warnings. Cast only in... Cast only in case of extreme emergency, it says around the edges of the page. I could use this spell here that says it will erase anyone I choose from all of my memories. If I scrub out Colonel Sanders, it would probably help me focus better on the up- Wait, that- okay, hold on. That could get like really dark and really sad really fast. Because like... I, I, I know of stories where it's, you know, like... I have things to do in life, and love has to come last, and then it goes to like really drastic measures. <laughs> but it's just, it, it's just a funny KFC visual novel. It can't be that serious, right? Dear lord, this reminds me of something that had me fucked up for weeks. Like, yeah, no, the, the whole, you know, like delete a person from your memory and you know the person you decide to delete is your most loved one like yeah no that i could only imagine <laughs> that is way drastic couldn't you do something else like anything else not rooted in dark magic like um, tie a string around your finger okay fine it is drastic but desperate times call for desperate measures you've got a memory erasing spell sitting right in front of you and a pretty good excuse to try it out. This came out of nowhere. This came out of completely nowhere. But with a little more setup and thought into it, this could actually be a really emotional scene. Like, yeah, this just came out of fucking nowhere, but this is actually really painful of a fucking decision to make. But no, I can't. You take your friend's advice and put the book away. It's almost time for class. Yeah, and then everyone just fucking ignores the shit. Like, 
Like, that, that could lead to something really fucking big, if this were anything else. Sprinkles is already in the room, waiting for the students to arrive. He clears his voice to make a quick announcement. I want you all to know, I feel something of a dog moment coming on, but I assure you, it's nothing to be afraid of. Forgetting about someone you care about fucks me up so hard. Dude. Yep. I, I know what I know exactly what I'm thinking of right now. Bunny Girl Senpai. My the very first arc, Mai's arc. Holy fucking shit, dude. That had me fucked up so hard. Like Mai's entire arc just Oh dude. Yeah, no, Bunny yeah, the first arc of Bunny Girl Senpai. That was something else. Holy shit. I want you all to know, I feel something of a dog moment coming on, but I assure you it's nothing to be afraid of. His cute little nose scrunches up and he begins to breathe quickly. Uh, he must be hungry. Reach for homework. Wait to see what happens. I don't fucking know. Sprinkle stops in his track. He focuses in on the window. The room is deadly silent. When you follow his gaze, you see a tiny orange squirrel perched on the cherry tree outside. Sprinkles turns feral and runs to the window of the classroom. He begins barking uncontrollably at the squirrel. <laughs> Terrace, you motherfucker! I told you to never come back here, Terrace! I will destroy you, Terrace! Sprinkles is barking furiously, drool flying off of his face. <laughs> the squirrel looks over, but he doesn't say anything back. You wonder, is that even a talking squirrel? Who named him Terrace? You better not show your chubby ass around here ever again. I know it's just chubby cheeks, but haha <laughs> ass. After Sprinkles is satisfied that his presence has been felt not only by Terrace, but any other squirrel in hearing distance, he returns to his professional tone. <clears throat> I apologize for the outburst. This actually brings up an important point. Thank you, my dude, for reminding me to dole out this indispensable bit of wisdom. You see, but before you can go any further, Miriam's love wait, what? Oh, Miriam's love drama spills over into the class. Good decision. Swingles is interrupted by words and sparks coming from the back of the room. Oh my god, they're fucking in the back of the classroom. I can't believe it. I told you to save it for after class. Oh no. Sad robo noises. You think I want to be thrown from a plane strapped to a stranger? Miriam and Clank appear to be arguing, but you still haven't learned to speak Clank's language of mechanical noises. But no, you had to show off to your cool kid friends, Jeff and Joan, JJ forever. Watchers form a triangle in midair as we descend. Triangles are the strongest shape, don't you know? Yeah, well, that doesn't make it a great date. Uh. Then take Jeff and Joan with you. You can hold hands as you pedal down the mountain or cliff for all I care. Holy shit, wow, she is going at him. Clank suddenly... Suddenly, nice. Clank begins to shudder. Steam pours out of the gaps in his panels, and then a loud ding stops him in his track. No amount of seasoning is going to make me want to eat that, Clank. Clank burps on a deep-fried sneaker. Considering that he himself has wheels, not feet, it's not entirely clear what the fuck. In terms of deep-fried footwear, I guess it looks okay. Clank slowly rolls out of the room to be alone with his shoe. Everyone tries to pretend they didn't see that entire thing go down. Nothing like a loud public breakup to cast a pall over the final day of school. Well, that was unfortunate. But we mustn't be distracted from what lies ahead. The final competition showdown challenge exam. Trademark. I'm still working on the title, but I think you get it. Test time approaches. See you all in the arena. But before you can think about your upcoming competition, there's a very beautiful soul nearby in need of a pep talk. Hey, Miriam, are you okay? 
Okay, I'm so mad I could smash a tiny mug spilling several droplets of hot cocoa all over the floor. <laughs> yeah, you show that fucking mug. Mug? Mug. God, I can't speak. How could he embarrass me in class like that, in front of everyone? Her tiny cocoa is a delicious treasure, so you know that this breakup is no joke, even if the source of her frustration is such a silly boy. I know that you know this, but I'm gonna say it out loud. You don't need anyone. Me and you, we're gonna cruise through this final test and hit the carpool lane of Success City. Miriam brightens up, imagining the wind rushing through her short bangs, but she hesitates to embrace the feeling all the way. <laughs> You're not going to saddle up on Colonel Sanders Stallion and ride off into the sunset without me. Of course not. Well, maybe, sort of, but I'm sure there's a pony out there with your name on it and the ranch big enough for both of us and whoever else we want to bring along. If it's not Popper Clank or anyone else you meet today, tomorrow, or this whole year, so what? You're a special person who shouldn't settle for the first someone to show a little interest anyhow. Miriam gives you a big hug and wipes the tears from her cheeks. I should really review my menu for today. I'm going to make a very special soup. And I bet that Professor Dog is going to love it up. Well, you were pep talking, Miriam. You completely missed lunch, but that's okay, because you had a better idea of how to spend the time before your exam. You decided to head to the arena early to practice a dish. This is it. The location of your final challenge. A test of will. A test of courage. A test of talent. And a chance to beat the pants off of Van Van the supposed man-man and his evil -er counterpart Ashley. As planned, you begin to run through a quick test of a recipe you've been working on. My dude's famous chicken pot pie. <laughs> they really had to do it. After practicing for months, making this dish comes second nature to you, and you're able to quickly get a fresh pot pie in the oven, but as soon as you do, your cram session is interrupted by Colonel Sanders. My dude, what are you doing here? There's still time before the final exam. Oh, just taking it all in. I'm big into visualizing success. I'm looking at my station and pursuing, oh, picturing victory. The pot pie has begun to bake and the smell is flo slowly, oh my God, I can't speak. Slowly filling the space around you. Hmm. Visualizing, huh? That's too bad. I was here hoping you were cooking something delicious. You'd usually happily share your food with anyone who's hungry. The last time you let Colonel Sanders get in your head, it cost you a cook-off. You decide it's time to put your cooking above your romantic desires, but that decision gets hard to stick to when the oven timer goes off behind you. Practice dish, you don't want to burn that pot pie. Okay, okay, you got me. I'm doing a bit more than visualizing. I know. My nose can smell a pot pie from 400 yards. <laughs> That's an oddly specific distance, but you'd expect nothing less from such an oddly specific man. You knew it was a pot pie just from the smell? Not just a pot pie, but a chicken pot pie with an all butter crust. And my nose is telling me something else. Oh no, is it bu burning? <laughs> no. I can smell that it was made with the heaping helping of TLC. But it'll probably start burning any second if you don't pull it out. What the hell is TLC? When I think TLC, I can't I can literally only think of the learning channel. Time loving care. Is that actually what it is? No fucking way. <laughs> There's no fucking way that's what it is. It actually oh, wow. That's actually impressive, I'm not gonna lie. The moment of truth. Wow. <gasps> it's the best pot pie I've ever tasted. I've always loved country cooking, and I could eat this all day. There's no time left. The final showdown is about to begin. Touch live cock. <laughs> yeah, no, when I think TLC, I think the learning channel, so I would never know. Sprinkles lays down the ground rules. There are no rules. That is, except to cook with everything you've got. You step up for the cook-off of a lifetime. Also, holy shit. 
That, that, that was so loud and came out of fucking nowhere. Also, this music. What is with the music in this game? It is actually unreal. You decide that mac and cheese, plus the pot pie you've been practicing, are just the dishes that will push you over to the edge of victory. No, push you over the edge of victory. Meanwhile, both Van Van and Ashley are prepping wildly elaborate dishes, as per their usual over-the-top sleeves. Miriam has her giant magnifying glass and several sets of tweezers. She's definitely prepared to go big going small. Colonel Sanders seems to be harnessing his 11 herbs and spices when he's trying to find a way to improve on something perfect. His original recipe from a chicken. Oh my fucking god. The intensity in the room starts at full 10 out of 10 with a frenzy of action. Everyone is calling out really cool special cooking moves as they prepare their food. Wow, this is getting serious. Colonel Sanders batters his chicken as it levitates through the air. Egg wash. Miriam furiously injects ingredients into an itty bitty pot of broth. Best friend, bastard blaster. Van Van flexes his pectorals as he chops open a sea urchin. Let's rock and roid. Rock and roid. Ashley scoops her pastries off of the tray with lightning speed. Shallow personality spatula. <laughs> Shallow personality spatula. Nice. God damn it, why is Ashley so thick? Even Clint gets in on it. Five dial pressure point chicken cooking technique. <laughs> Wait, when did Clint learn to speak English? It's the singularity, as was foretold. <laughs> We mustn't let it happen, or the appliance uprising will take us all. self destruct <laughs> Van Van quickly unplugs Clank and rolls him out of the back door of the arena. As you frantically prepare your dish, you notice Ashley has her spell book out. Is she going to use some dark magic to turn the tide? You've got a book of your own, and you're desperate not to see her win another battle. Should you take this opportunity to fight magic with magic, even if it's almost certainly evil magic? <laughs> Do it the hard way, like Colonel Sanders taught me too. Who needs magic when you've got passion and then you die to a fireball? I'm going to do it the hard way. Colonel Sanders sees that you've chosen to win on your own terms, and he gives you a subtle wink from across the room. I believe in you, my dude. Miriam notices too. And I've always believed in you, my dude, since we were little kids. Because I'm your best friend forever. You turn to notice that Miriam is at your station, cheering for you. Miriam, what about your dish? If you're here cheering, who's cooking? Tiny food, short cook time. I'm actually already done, so I thought I'd help you. Oh, that's sweet, but... Miriam tosses a handful of spices directly into your boiling uh -huh. noodles. It's the secret ingredient. Oh, shit. <laughs> well, I guess it turned around and blew, blew fucking up. However, she doesn't know that you lied and the ingredient was made up. And where in the world did she get Eye of Newt from? The boiling pot explodes, sending Miriam flying backwards. The watery noodles begin to swirl in the air, bubbling up into a dark cloud that thickens and congeals before your very eyes. It is I, Steve the Spork Monster. Steve? Wait, what happened to Borko? You're not here to battle me, are you? We spork monsters are many. I think Borko had the day off, but you have conjured Steve, and I hate to battle, so I'd say you're doing pretty alright. Oh, hey, you're in the middle of a cooking competition. I love this stuff. It's better than TV. You crazy kids and your culinary skills really impress me. Mind if I hang out? I'm sorry, Steve, but I'm in the middle of something. Do you mind? Steve the Sport Monster notices you've got the grimoire stashed beneath your cooking station. I see what you're up to. Crisscross some magical items and accidentally summoned me, huh? <laughs> yeah, you guessed it, sorta. If you're here, do you mind tossing me some fresh noodles in a pot of salted water? I'd love to. I've always wanted to be a top chef, actually. You know, when I was just a little sport pop back in the old country. <sighs> All I can say is boy. 
You can feel Spork Monster winding up to tell a very long and involved story. You don't know where exactly where they came from, but it seems like it was probably lonely there. Actually, you know what? Maybe you should watch from the stands. I really need to focus on this competition. I understand. It's kind of like that time in Monster, Go Monster School I had fallen asleep during scare tactics class and when I woke up... You toss a serious stare at Steve and he takes the hint. Never mind, I'll tell you later. Good luck. Having suffered this huge setback, you don't know how you could ever win. Summon extra power or drop out. Amazing. I can do this. I have what it takes. I came here to win. Your hair turns, turns mac and cheese orange as culinary energy flows. <laughs> this is so stupid. My heart is pure. My hands are steady. My taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for... Yes, my dude. You are the chosen one. You will avenge me. The power you'd been summoning immediately fades back out. You interrupted my inspiring monologue. Sorry. My heart is pure. My hands are steady. My taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for this moment. I will show the world my cookery. You begin to <laughs> levitate off the ground. <laughs> Energy courses through your body. You know that with this power, you can do anything. Except turn back time. Which would be super useful because while you are powering up, your chicken pot pie overcooked in the oven and can't be served. But don't worry, dear my dude. You may have suffered some setbacks, but all is not lost. Impressed with your fortitude, Colonel Sanders decides that you've earned his support. I've been watching you today, and I must say, I'm truly impressed. You've been thinking on your feet and rolling with the punches. He steps up next to your station and stands right beside you. I'm here to help. All you've managed to make is mac and cheese, and time is almost up, so you're going to need it. But Colonel Sanders, what about the test? What will happen to you? What about the rules? Following the rules has never been my thing. It, they literally said there are no rules, what the fuck. I follow my heart. What? Ah. Uh, yeah. Colonel Sanders unfolds a delicate white towel to reveal the most delicious fried chicken tenders you've ever laid your eyes on. And besides, sometimes unexpected combinations can have surprising effects that surpass their individual efforts. Are you suggesting? If we combine forces, we can form the perfect food union. Time's up, students. With time expired, it's the moment everyone has been waiting for. You must now prepare to present your dishes. A handful of students stand tall, but the class seems incomplete. It seems we're missing some students. Pop, clank. From off screen, you hear a pure and innocent giggle that can only come from one student. <laughs> I'm flying. It looks like it's coming from that broom closet over there. Miriam, would you mind? Inside of the closet, you see Pop hanging on a broom hook by the elastic of his underpants. Pop, get down from there right now. Let me guess. Oh, shit. Let me guess. Did Van Van have something to do with this? When somebody asked for a wedgie, who am I to refuse? I thought a wedgie was a salad. It looks like Pop is eliminated from the challenge, seeing how he didn't cook anything. I can't feel my leg. May I be excused? Sure. You kids and you and your pranks. I must say, it's not the worst prank in UCSAO history, but it's not exactly yearbook material. Wait a second. Pranks. Pranks. Clank! Where did that pressure cooker pressure cooker roll off to? You wait to hear a signature world beep or other amenopia, but there is none. Somehow we must have gotten unplugged, I guess. We'll have to figure that out later. That leaves only four remaining students. Please, collect your final projects. Yes, it has been a long semester. Wow, three whole days long. But after days of hard work, the time has come for me to eat. Miriam, please step forward. Now, describe your dish. I've made tender udon noodles and savory soup. My word, that's... It's so delicate. Is that a teeny tiny Narutomaki ice fire float in this itsy bitsy bowl? Dude, what is this fucking... 
<laughs> what is this fucking scam of a chef? You know that she's gonna be a fine dining chef because she's cooking food that sits in the palm of your fucking hand. Yes, chef. Please, call me Sprinkles. Chef is my father's name. Yes, Sprinkles, and some green, green tea made from ba baby tea leaves that I picked myself. Sprinkles carefully sniffs around the dish before opening his mouth and letting just the tip of his pink dog tongue dip into the bowl. Sublime! Would anyone else like a taste? Oh, come on, I'm not one of those dogs who doesn't floss. I even have a really cute electric toothbrush for dogs. Fine, I'll enjoy it all by myself. And in a flash, the entire meal has been devoured. Not that it took much, it was less than a thimble's worth of soup. Just a tip, Lamel. Shut up. A plus. Really do I taste a dish with as much love poured into it as yours. Miriam is overjoyed. She gives you a huge hug. Thank you, my dude, for helping me believe in myself. Van Van, you're up. Now, describe your dish. I made... <laughs> uni over smooth egg custard in an axe hone urchin cell shell topped with caviar. I'm not gonna lie, that, that seems pretty good. I've never eaten sea urchin, but it looks fancy. Did you skewer one type of urchin with spines from a second, different colored type of urchin? Yes, Sprinkles. A bit much, don't you think? That's exactly why I did it. A bit much is kind of my brand. Doesn't it look cool? Sprinkles leans in to sniff the uni, but he can't get his nose close on account of all the spice. He begins to paw at it erratically, causing the custard to slosh around. Bork. Please be gentle with my cuisine! Ugh. Finally, Sprinkles goes all in, tongue first, but can't get past all the needles. He reels back as his tongue is poked and prodded. Ouch, my tongue. The professor appears to be having an allergic reaction to the sting. I can't eat it. You can't poking my tongue. Disqualify. Wow, a stunning turn of events. Who would have thought that serving food in a bowl made of needles makes it difficult to eat? <laughs> Dejected, Van Van does not go gentle into the night. <gasps> Disqualified? For glamour? Don't discount simplicity. This isn't the last you've heard of me. Before forcing us to endure his swollen tongue for another moment, Sprinkles graciously laps up a bowl of milk. I know, I know, yeah, I'm a dog and I drink milk, get over it. Sometimes it helps calm my agitated tongue. Next student. Ashley, it's time to step up. Now, describe your dish. I made... Orange Blossom Turkish Delight in a slight rose water serum topped with French mer... Meringue... Meringue... Shit. Connected by sugar glass. Yo, real talk? That's actually fucking pretty as hell. She's a damn good dessert chef. Holy shit. God, I wanna fuck Ashley. God, I want to hate fuck Ashley. <laughs> that actually doesn't sound too bad. Indeed, it's quite delightful. However, I'd ask that you please refrain from eating it or attempting to taste it in any way. It's very fragile and meant to be a display piece. Okay, never mind, that's fucked. Don't eat the food? At a cooking school? Got toasting areas or something, my dude? I told you, it's a display piece. Fuck Ashley, dude. Also, fuck Ashley. <laughs> Me too. Ashley, I must say, it is beautiful. However, this is a cooking competition at a cooking school. Yeah, which is why I cooked it and did an extremely good job cooking it too. I didn't realize we were having an eating exam. If I wanted to be judged on eating, I'd go to the College of Eating School for the Hungry. Wow, what a bitch. Fuck Ashley. And fuck Ashley. I suppose you could smell it if you absolutely insist it, but don't breathe too hard. You might disrupt the sugar spiral. If the food cannot be eaten, it cannot be judged. You're disqualified. Rage overtakes Ashley, and she finally cannot keep her two-faced routine up. You wouldn't know high-end cuisine if it cooked you. And with that, Ashley storms off to rededicate herself to being the best, 
but this time without being shackled by trying to be fake nice and liked by everyone. Wowza. This isn't the last of you... Oh shit. This isn't the last you've heard of me either. If this class gets much smaller, I'll be teaching myself. You and Colonel Sanders, the final cook, step up together. Two chefs? What began as a, as a bowl of delicious mac and cheese has become something else. He examines it closely, sniffing and eyeing the bowl. I would kill for some fucking chicken tenders and mac and cheese. I can make mac and cheese right now, dude. Oh shit, man. I think I'm going to make myself some mac and cheese after this. Uh-oh. I don't have a good feeling about this. From somewhere in the room, a literal drum roll plays. Just when I thought I've seen everything in this kitchen, you give me this, this thing, and completely blow me away. In my 49 years of dog life, I have never tasted anything so delicious and perfectly balanced. It's so delicious, in fact, that everyone passes a class. You pass, you pass, and you pass, and you get a pass. Everyone gathers around and partakes of the mac and cheese bowl. They all seem to transcend this reality into another dimension. <laughs> you win! Together, you and Colonel Sanders have made a new menu item. The new menu item is so impressive, even the Van Van and Ashley are drawn back in by its magnetic fragrance. When they gaze upon your mac and cheese bowl, they admit that you are indeed an excellent chef. Sprinkles declares that you have passed. Everyone has passed. There are supposed to be more battles, but come on, how could they be better than this one? Now that the school year is complete and everyone has graduated, the students return for one last assignment to get their groove on. The cafeteria- dude, this song is too powerful. Like, this song actually hurts me. It is way too powerful. Fuck, dude. Oh my god, this song. <laughs> the cafeteria has been completely redecorated in order to serve as the site of the school's graduation dance. Compared to the massive high-tech cooking arena, the humble decor seems downright cute and cozy. All right, I guess DJ Dog is in the house. A roo roo roo. You knew that Sprinkles was a master chef, but also a world-renowned turntablist. Who says you can't teach an old dog new tricks? <laughs> I'd listen to this while dying or eating mac and cheese and casual wear Ashley. Oh, fuck. Oh. Dude, I wasn't ready for casual wear, Ashley. This is it. This is too much. I'm already touching my dick. Oh my fuck. Dude. Dude. Holy fucking dude, Ashley. She's so fucking thick. Oh my god. I, dude, I was not ready for casual wear, Ashley. Like, this is actually really fucking powerful. <laughs> Can you see how much Van Van is packing? <laughs> Mom, shut the fuck up. You're gay. Yo, Van Van's fucking huge, though. God damn. But, dude, Ashley, those fucking thighs. Oh, dude. And she still has the goddamn heart-shaped little cleavage cut out. Fuck me. Van Van and Ashley tell everyone that they've committed themselves to righting the wrongs they did while they were the villains. For a moment, you actually believe them. And then another haunting. No ghosts allowed. Oh. Oh, it was never actually a ghost. It was all a trick to get you to notice me. Wow. And everyone's together. And then it's a spork monster. I am not the spork monster, I am the party monster. 
Sunan tries to finish what he had to say, but everyone's too wrapped up talking to Spork. Sorry, party monster. Dejected student walks off. Maybe things didn't work out for Miriam romantically, but she found the love in her cooking, and you know she's gonna do great. Also, casual wear Miriam is also really cute. Holy dude! I- oh my god, okay, but still, I wanna fucking smash Ashley. Holy shit, fuck her senseless. God damn. A red carpet rolls out across the floor of the ballroom. It's like a Hollywood movie premiere. Who could command such an entrance? Alright. Is this casual wear Sanders? Can I see the casual wear Colonel? Or is he just gonna show up in his uniform because that's his gimmick? Oh, fuck you. <laughs> it's Pop. He's arrived late to the dance, but apparently for a good reason. Walking the carpet, you see perched atop his dirty chef's hat. A crown? Welcome back, Pop. I know you, ain't, you weren't able to complete the final exam and accept your diploma, so we had it mailed directly to your father. We, figure, we figured it was the least we could do for the school's dean. Oh, now I get it. And we got a new wing on the school, not to mention the honor of educating the son of Chancellor such and such. The music at the dance is interrupted by the sound of sparking and electrical hissing. It's Quang, who has arrived late to the dance. Now that I've graduated, I, oh shit, do I give him robo voice? I'll give him robo voice, fuck it. Now that I have graduated, I can reveal my truth. Oh, he's still doing the talking thing. I am Clank, and I am not of this earth. I am actually of a faraway planet in another dimension. Are you fucking- you know what? No, never mind, I'm not doing the robot voice. This is three times stupider than I expected it to be. I actually feel like I knew it this whole time. Now that I've learned your ways of your kind, I must return. Miriam, will you come with me? I don't know what to say. Besides, no, fucking, that's a different dimension. I've... I've just begun to learn who I really am. This isn't the time for me to devote my life to figuring out who you are, Clink. You're blown away by Miriam's maturity. It's pretty clear that she's managed to surpass you in that regard. I understand. Kind of. Humans are weird. A portal opens up and Clink disappears through it. What the fuck? Finally, Colonel Sanders arrives. Dude, t-shirt and jeans... T-shirt and jeans, Colonel. I actually would have never guessed how powerful this is. Howdy, classmates. Just like the first day you met him, he has come prepared to feed the entire class. However, it's not just enough to give them a bucket of chicken. This time, it's a full meal. Ha, <laughs> my $5 fill up. I didn't get to be the most famous chicken man in the history of chicken and man by not reminding people to go out and buy my chicken. <laughs> what the fuck kind of ending? No, it's not the end. As everyone feasts on their delicious chicken dinner, Colonel Sanders finds you sitting at the edge of the dance floor. Colonel Sanders? Yes, my dude. I couldn't help but wonder. Was our final exam team up purely an act of strategy, carried out by two cunning chefs? Or was it something more? I'm afraid I can't answer that question directly. Instead, I'd like to ask you a question of my own. <laughs> Colonel, give me your $5 fill up. <laughs> oh my god. May I have this dosy -si dough? -do? Colonel Sanders extends his hand to you, and you feel a surge of energy jump off the tips of his fingers. His hand, the hand of a master chef, so dedicated to the craft of fine cookery. So tender, yet refined, so milky smooth, fingers like finely battered drumsticks, turned in flour, soaked in buttermilk, and dusted with exotic spices. Really makes you think. But they do not reach for tongs, a knife, or even a spork. Tonight, they reach for you. And though our feet may tire of, 
Oh shit, nor our feet may tire of dancing. I believe that this is just the beginning of our steps together. Colonel Sanders, I... Will you not... Will you not only join me in the dance floor, but in the kitchen as my co-chef and partner in both business and in life? You gasp. Could it be? Is he really saying me and you together? Ever since I met you, my dream has changed. It's not enough to simply open the world's greatest chain of fried chicken restaurants. No. Even then, my life would be incomplete without you by my side. So what do you say, partner? I say, I love you, Colonel Sanders. They did the thing. They did the, they did the intro. The, the little, the little title. What the fuck did I just play? Why is it so loud? There's so much energy behind that intro, every single time. There's no gallery mode. There's no gallery mode. Dude. I, I need a gallery, like, I need a gallery mode of casual wear Ashley. Because this absolute slut needs to get her brains fucked out. I, I swear to God. Holy shit. All right. These are the people to blame for making this making this game. Take notes. Except except Hexany. Hexany and your fucking music. Holy shit. This was music made by a single guy. Like that's honestly not surprising because I'm sure that's a common thing. But yo, Hexany is on point. Straight up. Gallery mode, easy roll 34. Dude, you don't understand how badly I want to fuck Ashley's brains out. You actually don't. You really don't. I wonder if I load. <laughs> the first bite, second, third. What the fuck? Hexany definitely watched Clan Ad. The fucking. <laughs> Luna just added me to the friends list. God, Ashley is so thick. Okay, I'm out of here. This game... This game is something else. That's all I can say. This game is something else. What was that? <sighs> well, I'm really in the mood for fried chicken. And I really gotta say... I really wanna fuck Ashley, silly. That is all. That's the moral of the entire story. But damn, Colonel Sanders is also hot. <laughs> Good fucking stream. 10 out of 10 quality. I'll see you guys later. It's nighty night time. Goodbye.